Here's the latest project. This is an American, what's known as a Morgan Dollar from Ooh, date, 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 date. 1883. Come on. 1883. So that's, uh, what's that? 137. 137 years old? 90, yeah. 137 years old. Right, let's get it out of the uh now immediately i can just see something up here hang on right let's get it out of the pack and uh and see hang on. i might have to just pause this for a second now it's not in bad nick considering it's 137 years old but there is a little dent in the reed. I can't see much else wrong with it, to be honest. It's an odd little. Yeah. Right, so uh, it is just that. That's okay. The way these are made are we punch a hole in the middle and then we pull these edges up. Or actually we punch a hole in the middle and push those edges down so this then becomes the outside of the ring the middle then is stretched out so it deforms this a little bit obviously because that's stretched out um, that's the inside so I think I can probably hide that I'll probably shave this anyway so that the ring fits nicer there will still be, there'll still be a bit of a mark, but not too bad. I'm, st I'm, I'm all right with that. So these, um, these Morgan dollars, they're silver. They should be 100% silver, especially from 137 years ago. And they should weigh an ounce, which is 28 uh, grams. In my experience, they're usually a little bit under that. Anywhere between 26 to 28, so. Twenty six point five nine. Yep. So that's all right. That's well within, well within the uh, the range. Yes. Nice coin. And when I've made them before, people have wanted it so that I can bring out that in God we trust. Um, and then this kind of detail around here. You lose some of the eagle, obviously, but I'm going to make this as wide as possible. So um, it'll be quite a wide banded ring. And on the inside here, I don't think that will be too much of an issue. They're nice, aren't they? Right, I suppose we should get on with it. First, uh, the scary part. This is the part where people usually question whether or not they've made the right decision to turn a, a nice coin into a ring because this is what we have to do with it. This is called annealing. Now when you heat silver up it becomes softer and allows you to machine it and engineer it in such a way that you don't ruin it. Not so shiny now. Right, so that is the first stage. And we will repeat that annealing probably, I'd have said, about another 30 or so times before this ring is completed. Probably more. 
I'd have thought. The first thing we're going to do is we are going to clean up our tool bench a little bit and work out the size of owl. This is where it gets interesting because aesthetics play a major part in the finished ring. For the widest band, this is three eighths. Now the only issue with this is that it means the distance from here to both edges of the ring is not going to be equal. There's going to be more space where the eagle's head is. So that's three eighths. I think we get three eighths. I'm going to go for seven sixteenths. Now that's only. <laughs> it it sounds like not massive. It's one sixteenths. Seven sixteenths, right? Three eighths is six sixteenths for people who do old money. So this is one sixteenth of an inch bigger. But the reason I'm going to do that is once that goes in, the distance between or the, the in God we trust bit will be more centered and the reading and the, the laurel uh, at the bottom will be more pronounced so that's why i'm going for this double check seven sixteenths now this is where people really then start to panic i'm just gonna pop that in there now this is a self-centering punch i'm gonna put that in here and this has got a cone on the inside so it will pull it into the middle zoom out right, I'm just going to pause while I absolutely double triple check that the punch is now in the assembly and the ring is uh, the ring the coin is centered this is the second part where people usually question whether or not they should have made this beautiful coin into a ring because we use this one ton press uh, sorry no it's not it's a six ton press sorry to push that punch down through the coin and that is the middle of the coin and now let's take that out of there Ooh. no going back now so there we have and you'll see what I mean now with the distance between here and here is now much nicer than if we'd have had that smaller hole. Right, good. I'm happy with that. Next, there's a lot of deburring. Uh, deburring is we run a blade around the inside and the outside because we need to ensure there are no imperfections whatsoever on that inside edge. Because when we start to fold it and stretch it, the slightest imperfection will lead to a crack and ruin the entire ring. Right. I'm going to try with the head cam as I do that. It might turn out really badly. Microphone on. I was supposedly recording. And um, I don't know. We'll see. 
This is the next frightening stage. <laughs> For those who haven't seen it before. Just by using those cones, the non-reeded side is up to a size T. I don't know if that shows up on the camera or not anyway. Believe me, it's on a size T. Now, this ring is only going to be a size T. But to get it to there, we need to make it bigger and then smaller. <laughs> I know. I know. What can you say? Sounds, sounds counterintuitive. And the way we do it is on this machine. This machine, as this comes up, it stretches these out. And it's, a, it's a ring stretcher. That's the name of the machine. And it's what it does. So, I put a piece of um, paper towel on. And that stops this metal destroying the inside detail on the coin. Because the inside is just as important as the outside. And then, ever so, ever so gently, I'm going to open that out. And that now, I said it was on a T, it's now on a U and a half. Guess what? I'll edit this out if I remember. That's also, of course, assuming the camera is recording and not just, uh, perhaps not just pointing at my belly or at the ceiling or off to the left. Could be anywhere. The next part is a mixture of scary stuff and horrendous stuff. First of all, very, very briefly, I'm going to open this out a little bit more, but not by much, probably just to a U. Uh, I mean a V. A V and a little bit, maybe. Yeah, a V and a half. Now the reason for that is what I've now done is I've work hardened this part. This part is still annealed and soft. The reason we want it to sit is just move all my bits out of the way. The next part of this machining exercise, I've taken a bit longer on this one because I've wanted to, to film it as well, but this is where, and again, this um, PTFE tape Purely, the only reason is to protect the detail of the coin from being damaged when we squish it against uh, tooling grade stainless steel. Now what we're going to do is push this into cone. No idea if this is going to work on the film. But before we do that, we need to try and take this um, PTFE off the reed. And the reason for that is we don't want it potentially slipping. So, how we do that? Ha! It's my phone. We just push that 
lightly into a die. I don't know if you can see, it just cuts enough to take that off. Next, we need to lube up. It's really warm in here today, so this coconut oil, as coconut butter or whatever it's called, has melted. But that's okay. It's still good enough lube. You can never have too much lube. And we just drop that in there and center it up. Oops, okay. So now that is just sat in there and the PTFE is to cushion it from the outside. And next, we're gonna squish it down out of this hole at the bottom. But we need to make sure that it is level in there first, otherwise it will go all skewy. We don't want it going all skewy. So again, on the sixth ton, press. Actually, if I just loosen this, turn it. down again. I don't know if we'll catch it on camera. Probably not. And there we have That's not going to be far off the size we want. It's going to be probably about two sizes over or oh, three sizes over. That's okay. That's good because now we start the process of making it. As you can see, it's still slightly cone shaped. If we have a look at the non reeded side, that's going to be up around WX. So now's the, now's the stage of gently forming it into a ring. And this is where I'm going to start taking some of the reed out on the inside, which is where we won't lose that imperfection. So lots more annealing and then squishing back through these reducing cones. So I won't bother boring you with all that, if indeed it has actually recorded. Really not sure how the um, head camera footage is going to come out. So I'm back using the, uh, using the traditional method. Now by a series of lots of annealing and then using increasingly sized fiber cones, pushing into, well actually just this die, um, we have got the intermediate stage between coin and ring. And if I just show you there, that's that little imperfection that I talked about earlier. Now I'll show you in a little bit, once we've got this into a ring shape, how I'm going to try and reduce the impact of that. But there's a lot of work to do still. It's coming along. Back soon. You join me sometime later. <laughs> Still annealing and squishing. Now I've marked on here um, how far down I have placed uh, this Dullerin pusher. And that's how far down the coin is in there now and I will have to probably pause this for a second while I use two hands to push it out. Okay, there we are. You know what, I'm going to have to pause again while I unwrap it. Oh. Okay, 
Now I think we should be undersized. Now we measure this on the reed side. Oh, boat going past outside. And we, yep, perfect. We're undersized by one and a titch, which means then. Oops, edit that out. Now, why do we undersize it? Realistically, what we have here is a cone. So, the cone, um, we have the reeded side, which is thicker, obviously, than the side that we punched the, um, the actual hole from. But the ring needs to be ring shaped not um, cone sort of shaped. So we take about the middle as being where the right size is. We need to bring this in and this out. So if we undersize the ring as we have now, this is a size too small. What we can do is bring this out and it'll automatically bring these out too. And then the final adjustment is where we get this exactly right. And we should have then a nice straight edged or as straight as you, you're going to get ring. And that means, boys and girls, popping it on the ring stretcher again. But I can only do that really with two hands. Sometime <laughs> later quite some time later i should have just left that on <laughs> this i don't know this, i might i might have to edit this out in fact i'm getting ready to edit this out i think i've gone through this in a tiny little increments of size Let's see. Now it's the reed size we need to measure it on. Please don't be far off. <laughs> Let's have a look. Wow. I don't know whether that's just experience or luck. Look at that. Crumbs. Wow. <laughs> Hey, now, perhaps I do know what I'm doing after all. Now let's have a look at how I've managed to hide that imperfection. Can you tell where it is? Well, I can, obviously, because I knew where it was. There we are. It's actually at 12 o'clock there. Tiny, tiny little indent in. Now I could try and sand a bit of that out, but do you know what? I like the idea of leaving that little imperfection there because we don't know when that was put in, when that little dint was put in. That could have been any time in the last 137 years. So I'm going to leave it in there because it's a part of the character of the coin or of the ring. And those reeds, obviously, as you, as you squish them in from being a big round flatty thing to a tubular thing, the reeds get slightly deformed anyway. So I'm leaving that in. Let's give it a polish and see what it looks like. Wow. This is just the first polish off the um, buffing wheel. That. I like that. I do like keeping that. That's um I think that's fitting for something 137 years old. Yeah. I notice a difference between 
what I'm calling old quality silver and new quality silver. This is um, far nicer to work. Yes, I'm very, very pleased with that. Let's give it a bit of a proper polish with a proper polishing cloth. We've lost the best of the daylight. Um, it's now gone just past seven o'clock and I've given it a very quick uh, polish with one of these um, proper silver polishing cloths and I'd recommend these to anybody who has silver jewellery or a silver ring made by me. Uh, very very pleased with this. This has come out absolutely beautifully and as I've said before you notice the, the difference between a quality older silver and, and new silver. I know I know you shouldn't but yeah but I'm, I think that I'm very very happy with this. Now there are various finishes that you can put on a ring such as this. Uh, you can um, you can use a liver of sulphur to make it black and then just gently polish off uh, so it brings out the raised pieces as silver. That's a nice finish, but <sighs> that still needs a, a lacquer on and it wears off in time. And I think it's a little bit like, I don't know. I think it's a little bit like just wrapping something beautiful in an old sack. I just, this silver is, this is such lovely silver. I like it as it is. I'll obviously give the customer the option for different um, patterners if, uh, if that's what they want. I love this, just, it is just quality coin. And I do like the idea of having left that imperfection in there. I think it's a tribute to the ring because we don't know how that was put in or when. And it doesn't affect, I've kept the outside, you, you can't notice it on the outside. It's only once you know it's there, once you realise that you can actually pick it out. But that's that's um, 137 years old, beautiful. Uh, so I'm going to call that done now. I shall now send a copy of this video or a link to this video to the uh, to the customer. Very pleased. Um, if you like this nonsense <laughs> and the stuff that I do, please feel free to subscribe to my little channel. It'd be lovely to have you. And if you want to know why. I do this sort of thing there's a link in the description underneath uh, I don't do this purely uh, for beer money <laughs> I don't do this for beer money at all because I have my own little brewery I do this to raise um, funds for um, little projects that I think are important and I hope you do too there's a link in the description but for now I think I am happy with this Morgan dollar. Until next time, thank you for watching. And I know I'm not really, I'm not really much of a filmmaker, but I hope you found it interesting nonetheless.